Hello, I'm Shelley Duvall. Welcome to Fairy Tale Theater. Tonight's tale is based on the classic Robert Browning poem about a colorful traveler and a promise made. Woe to Hamlin if the piper's not paid. The Pied Piper of Hamlin. Eek. argument, young Willie, I'm sure. And what I'm certain, I can't answer as you phrased it. Put like that, I see no reason why you shouldn't stay up until dawn. That's what holidays ought to be. And then... No, no, no. Where's little Willie? Oh. Hello, hello. What's all this? Going to bed so early? That's the idea. Well, what about the music? You're just tuning up downstairs. Why can't I stay near the music? Robert, why can't I? Part of my mind needed no. They're in London. What a devious little creature you are, to be sure. You put me in mind of St. Augustine's observation, that the innocence of children is due less to the purity of their hearts than the weakness of their limbs. Oh, don't be such a worry, Ward. The boy's parents are in town, as he says. Where's the harm? They needn't know of young Willie's nocturnal revels. Eh? You're not being particularly helpful, Edward. Where's your sense of responsibility? Come along, Willie, into bed with you. I promised you, Mama and Papa, that a certain measure of decorum would be observed if they let you come into the country for a fortnight to amuse us all. Now, they've kept their end of the bargain, and you've kept yours. We've all enjoyed fighting the Red Indians with you on the heath. I'm sure my coachman can't recall such excitement. Edward. And you've kept yours. Now, I must keep mine. Yes, yes, or pay the piper. That's how it goes, I shouldn't wonder. Pay the what? My dear Edward, will you kindly adjourn so I can get this boy off to a decent night's sleep as I promised? All right, all right. Well, Willie, it looks as if we're beginning to pay the piper already. <laughs> Good night, young man. Good night, sir. What does that mean? Pay the piper. Who's the piper? Who's the piper? And what must he be paid? What a lot of questions. This wouldn't be another diversion on your part, would it, Master William? I only want to know what it means. Hmm. All right. If I explain it to you, will you go off to sleep without further demur or procrastination? Is it a story? Well, yes. Actually, it is a story. Now, have I your promise? Bed at my conclusion? Does it have a ghost? No, it does not. Oh. But it has several dreadful goings on. Oh. Now, have I your promise? Promise. Very well. Hamlin Towns in Brunswick, by famous Hanover City. The River Wesser, deep and wide, washes its wall on the southern side. A pleasanter spot you never spied. When begins my ditty? Almost 500 years ago. To see that townsfolk suffer so from vermin was a pity. Vermin? Rats! 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 They fought the dogs and killed the cats. They bit the babies in the cradles. They ate the cheeses out of the vats. And licked the soup from the cook's own ladles. Yuck! They split open the kegs of salted sprats. The rat catcher. 
made nests inside men's Sunday hats. You, you dirty rat! They even spoiled the women's chats. So I just said to him, if you think I intend to go... What I said was... Well, you're absolutely right. Imagine him supposing that you put up with that sort. Having a touch of indigestion, dear. It wasn't me! Oh, well, don't look at me. Drowning their speaking with shrieking and squeaking in 50 different sharps and flats. Hold there. This assembly's called to order. To order. Oh. Oh. Make a note of that, town recorder. Just a moment. Where's the mayor? Uh, he said he'd try and stop by later. Something about a major meeting having to do with banquet seating. Oh, oh. typical! Oh. You know what that's about. Oh. They're sitting there drinking stout! Oh. Silence, please! Oh. <clears throat> now, this meeting has uh, been convened to see if from rats we can be weaned. I'd uh, like to call on Bernard the Necromancer to see if he has found the answer <laughs> since... Ulrich the alchemist didn't pan out. The rats have had the upper hand out, so take it, Bernard. This is tragic. The folks in Hamlin could use some magic. Speak up! This is a study commissioned by the corporation. The result of years in Tense investigation. We don't know what causes the rats to flourish in multiplicity or why they've chosen to do it in our fair city. Don't bother us with those details. Tell us how to get rid of them. Heads and tails. <laughs> get rid of them? Well, that problem's hard to fix. After all, this is the year only 1376. It's later than you think. <laughs> Be reasonable, these rodents aren't mink. We don't know what makes them slink about in nooks and crannies, attacking cooks and nannies, driving us to drink in the brink of desperation. <laughs> you see this? <laughs> this is perspiration. Oh. Science hasn't figured out the rats. After all, we still think the world is flat. <laughs> uh, we've given them rat's bane, but it's no use. They drink it just like orange juice. Uh -huh. <laughs> Hamlin's gone from bad to verse. We must conclude that there's a curse. We know that! We have had one new suggestion. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody seems to think that if we all rubbed snake oil all over our bodies, it would make such a stink. Oh, that... No more potions! We've had it with your smelly nose! Again, again! This meeting is again! You're here again! Tell me, friend, there's rats at large here. Could you show me who's in charge here? What are you, some new arrival? We're talking here about survival. You best be hitting the trails, man. We're not in the mood for travelling salesmen. I only asked a civil question. As a matter of fact, I have a small suggestion. You mustn't mind them. They're just frightened. Too much so to be enlightened by any wandering... Are you an actor? You might call me a rat attractor. Consider me yet another factor in mankind's never-ending vermin war. I try to help man even up the score. Unless, of course, I am not heeded. I never intrude where I'm not needed.
You're needed here without a doubt. You must have figured that much out. But you must take your application to the mayor and corporation. That's where you should be appearing to get yourself a decent hearing. Thanks, young sir, for your advice. I'll take it. And I won't think twice. Now, this I'll promise. The time may come when I wear out my current welcome. Should that happen, you have my word. I'll remember what I heard here and give you my protection. Against what? Why, against unnatural selection. Remember, young sir, that all's illusion. And dreams, though potent, are no solution to the problems that we face. The rainbows that we chase are no more real than the idea your foot will heal. My words, no doubt, seem strange to you. But please remember that they're true. And so the people in a body for the town hall came flocking. It is clear, say I, our mayors are noddy. And as for the corporation, shocking! I think we buy gowns lined with ermine for dolts that can't or won't determine what's what best, best to win us of our women! You know, everything's under control. You hope because you're old and obese to find in the furry civic robe ease. <laughs> Rouse up, sirs! Give your brains a racking to find the remedy we're lacking. Uh, or sure as fate, we'll send you packing. <laughs> Good people, him. <laughs> At this, the mayor and corporation quaked with mighty consternation. An hour they sat in council. At length, an alderman broke silence. This is another fine mess you've got us into. Me? How do you come to that conclusion? I didn't start this verminous intrusion. No, but you're the mayor, are you not? Is it your responsibility or what? It happened during your administration. That's certainly a grave consideration. And as for history's verdict, I shudder to think... They'll throw everything at us but the kitchen sink. You saw what happened outside just now? They're in a foul mood anyhow. Today was fruit. That's bad enough. Tomorrow might be stronger stuff. Well, whose idea was that full report? Ah, I see. No one with a prompt retort. No one wants to say that's true, but only because it was mainly you. I? <laughs> it was really I? Oh, me. Oh, my. Perhaps I should lay down my mitre to someone who's a wee bit brighter. Perhaps they should all change their vote and shift the government to someone of no tool. Not so fast. You're quite forgetting all the salaries we're getting. Don't talk like that. It's just upsetting. Changing the mayor is no solution. Not for our pockets. Nor this pollution. Will no one rid me of these meddlesome rats? If they did, I'd consider changing hats and taking my place alongside you and let history say simply... Oh, boo. You're bargaining with empty air. We need to enter their whole lair. We don't need self-sacrifice. That probably only works with mice. For the Gilda, I'd mine ermine gown sell. I wish I were a mile hence. It's easy to bid one. 
Rack one's brain. Oh, I'm sure my poor head aches again. I've scratched it so and all in vain. Who oh, for the trap? A trap, a trap! Just as he said this, what should hap at the chamber door but a gentle tap? <clears throat> a gentle tap. Places! What's that? Oh, <laughs> only a scraping of shoes on the mat. <laughs> Anything that sounds like a rat makes my heart go pitter pat. Come in, the mayor cried, looking bigger. And in did come the strangest figure. His queer long coat, from heel to head, was half of yellow and half of red. And he himself was tall and thin with sharp blue eyes each like a pin and light loose hair yet pasty skin no tuft on cheek nor beard on chin but lips where smiles went out and in there was no guessing his kith and kin and nobody could enough admire the tall man and his quaint attire quoth one it's as my great grandsire starting up at the trump of doom's tone had walked this way from his painted tombstone who let you in, sir? Go away. We're giving no free meals today. You've interrupted a serious matter. Perhaps I have. Yet I flatter myself that I could fix. We want none of your cheap theatrics. We've no time for strolling players. How's Hamlin fixed for rodent slayers? Oh, no, not another necromancer. We're giving none a second chance, sir. State your business and depart. We've lost our faith in your so-called art. Please, your honors, pardon me. I'm able, by means of a secret charm, to draw all creatures living beneath the sun that creep or swim or fly or run after me, so as you never saw. Oh, what did he say? And I... Chiefly use my charm on creatures that do people harm. The mole, the newt, and the toad, and the viper. And people call me the Pied Piper. And here they noticed around his neck a scarf of red and yellow stripe to match with his coat of the selfsame check. And at the scarf's end hung a pipe. And his fingers, they noticed, were ever straying, as if impatient to be playing upon this pipe, as low it dangled over his vesture, so old-fangled. Yet, say I, poor piper as I am, in Tartary I freed the Khan last June from his huge swarms of gnats. I eased in Asia the Nizan of a monstrous brood of vampire bats. <laughs> Easy enough for you to say. Those places are far enough away. How do we know your tales are true, that we should place our faith in you? Your reservation's not unjust. And I'll respond to earn your trust. These rats, I say, are come from Satan. And if their exit you would hasten, I urge you heed my brief oration. I've done business with the best. North, or south, or east, or west. My powers have yet to fail a test. And my references are on request. You say your city's plagued with frogs? I'll have them disappear in bogs. Or if your township's cursed with lice, I'll pack them off to paradise. Piping's my game, extinction's my goal. Wide is my fame, famed is my role. My offer's one you can't refuse, unless you see how you could lose. So, I propose a simple pact. To solve your problem for a fact, say yes. And I'll proceed at once. You should be free of rats by lunch. Oh. And um, if by chance you keep your word, say you uh, 
what shall be your reward? As for what your brain bewilders, if I can rid your town of rats, will you give me a thousand guilders? One. Was the exclamation of the astonished mayor and corporation. <laughs> Fifty thousand's not my fee. One thousand guilders contents me. Now, are we a bargain made? Oh, yes. Yes. <laughs> then tis time for me to ply my trade. <laughs> <laughs> if only one could well believe there was aught he could achieve. No harm, I ween, to let him try. But if he fails, I know I'll cry. Into the street, the piper stepped. Smiling first, a little smile, as if he knew what magic slept in his quiet pipe the while. And then, like a musical adept, to blow the pipe his lips he wrinkled, and green and blue his sharp eyes twinkled, like a candle flame where salt is sprinkled. And ere three shrill notes the pipe uttered, heard as if an army muttered, and the murmuring grew to a grumbling, and the grumbling grew to a mighty rumbling, and out of the houses the rats came tumbling. Great rats, small rats, lean rats, brawny rats, brown rats, black rats, grey rats, tawny rats. Brave old plodders, gay young friskers, fathers, mothers, uncles, cousins, cocking tails and prickling whiskers, families by tens and dozens, brothers, sisters, husbands, wives, flocked to the piper for their lives. From every which way, rats came streaming. So many rats, it looked like dreaming. Street to street, he piped, advancing, and step for step, they followed, dancing, dancing, prancing, preening, glancing, filled with visions most entrancing. Woven by the piper's spell, they followed the music most enhancing. Tumbling in pursuit, pell mell. A 
until they came to the river Wesser. to feast in jubilation to mark the rat rain's expiration. Cooking without rats. Who'd believe it? It's difficult, I must say, to conceive it. No more rat soup or rat tattooey. Nor any rat sandwiches or any rat louie. <laughs> Sleep, my child, and don't you wonder. There's no rats your crib to plunder. And through your dreams they'll never blunder. And now the town was free of vermin, students were free to learn their German. Quiet, please. Let's have no talk. It was just a bit of chalk. <laughs> and sleeping dogs were left to lie in peace to watch the world go by. Let's hear it for the mayor and corporation! <laughs> Thanks to their sagacity and wisdom, Hamlin's folks at last are rid from all the rats that made us moan. From being rat finks, we're now a rat-free zone! <laughs> Friends, the Mennonites and countrymen, lend me your ears. <laughs> We certainly enjoyed those cheers. <laughs> it wasn't easy, you may be sure, to get for Hamelin this rat cure. Your mayor and your corporation labored hard, with much vexation, frequently in consternation, working sometimes through the night to try and see our way to light, scorning food and drink's delight to fulfill your great expectation. And now, we come to you in victory and bid you, and bid you succumb to topsickery. <laughs> omitting though, omitting though no sage preventions to thwart any other rat's intentions. <laughs> Go, good people, get long poles Poke out the nests, block up the holes, consult with carpenters and builders, and leave not a trace. But of... first, if you please. My thousand guilders. Uh. <laughs> Just a minute. Gentlemen, let us withdraw. I think there's something in my craw. Uh, that, 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 that's it, folks. <laughs> Take a break. What, don't, don't just stand there like awake. Oh. <laughs> <sighs> A thousand guilders. I feel blue. So does the corporation, too. Council dinners make rare havoc. With claret, moselle, van de grave and hock. And half the money would replenish our cellar's biggest butt with rennish. But what on earth are we to tell him? Perhaps an accident should fail him. Put that down. We can't be furious. Such an action would be spurious. If our contract we would sever, we'll 
have to be a lot more clever. Pay the sum to a wandering fellow. To the gypsy coat of red and yellow. Besides, <laughs> quoth the mayor with a knowing wink, our business was done on the river's brink. We saw with our eyes the vermin sink. And what's dead can't come to life, I think. Who <laughs> <laughs> <Hold> there? <laughs> Bring in the piper. <laughs> I'll handle him. <laughs> you will wisen this riper. Oh, and after this affair is over, what say you to a fresh fillet of plover? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> he's right, by George. After all our toil, we deserve a super royal. <laughs> and nothing let our pleasure mar. You know I dote on caviar. And further to our pasture raise, I move we vote ourselves a raise. Yeah. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> the piper, sir. Ah! <laughs> Friend! <laughs> Ah, we are not the folk to shrink from our duty of giving you something for drink and a matter of money to put in your poke. But as to the guilders, what we spoke of them, as you very well know, was in joke. <laughs> Besides, our losses have made us thrifty. <laughs> a thousand guilders. <laughs> Come, <clears throat> take fifty. Hmm? <laughs> No trifling. I can't wait. Be time. I've promised to visit by dinner time Baghdad and accept the prime of the head cook's pottage, all he's rich in, for having left in the caliph's kitchen of a nest of scorpion no survivor. With him I prove no bargain driver. With you, don't think I'll bait a fiver. And folks who put me in a passion may find me pipe after another fashion. How do you think I'll brook worse treating uh, the, than a crook? Insulted by a lazy ribald with idle pipe and vesca piebald. If you break the promise that you made, this is the only time I'll warn. By the time the sun has changed to shade, you'll wish you'd all were never born. Do you threaten us, fellow? Go, oh, do your worst. Blow your pipe there till you burst. <laughs> So be it. Hamlin's cursed. I got you told him to his face. <laughs> that should put him in his place. You don't suppose we've made an error? That he'll return with some new terror? Importing some new breed of vermin for us to conclude our second term in? Nonsense! <sighs> Nonsense! If revenge he plans on taking, why is he standing there and waiting? Why doesn't he just go to it? <laughs> I'll tell you why. <laughs> he just can't do it. Perhaps his vengeance takes some brewing. And while it does, we sit here stewing. We don't know how his plans are made. By the time the sun has changed to shade. I'm not sure why, but I'm afraid. Maybe we could offer him a medal. I'm not about to backpedal. We made a promise. We're not Higgs. No, it wasn't a promise. It was politics. <laughs> oh, let's leave him to his little tricks. <laughs> Come, don't let's all sit here glum. We've saved ourselves a tidy, Sarton. <laughs> uh, 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 
Once more, he stepped into the street. And to his lips again, laid his long pipe of smooth, straight cane. And ere he blew three notes, such sweet, soft notes as yet musicians' cunning never gave the enraptured air. There was a rustling that seemed like a bustling, of merry crowds jostling and pitching and hustling, that small feet were pattering, wooden shoes clattering, little hands clapping, and little tongues chattering. And like fowls in a farmyard when barley is scattering, out came the children. Running. He's here. All the little boys and girls with rosy cheeks and curls and sparkling eyes and teeth like pearls tripping and skipping ran merrily after the wonderful music with shouting laughter the mare was dumb and the council stood as if they were changed into blocks of wood. Unable to move a step or cry to the children, merrily skipping by, could only follow with the eye that joyous crowd at the piper's back. But how the mayor was on the rack and the wretched council's bosom beat as the piper turned from the high street to where the Wesser rolled its waters right in the way of their sons and daughters. However, he turned from south to west and to Koppelberg Hill his steps addressed. After him the children pressed. Great was the joy in every breast. He can never cross that mighty top. He's forced to let the piping drop. And we shall see our children stop. When lo, as they reached the mountainside, a wondrous portal opened wide, as if a cavern was suddenly hollowed, and the piper advanced. And the children followed. And when all were in, very last, the door in the mountainside shut fast. Did I say all? No. One was lame and could not dance the whole of the way. And in after years, if you would blame his sadness, he was used to say, It's done in our town since my playmates left. I can't forget that I'm bereft of all the pleasant sights they see, which the piper also promised me. For he led us, he said, to a joyous land, joining the town and just at hand where waters gushed, and fruit trees grew, and flowers put forth a fairer hue, 
and everything was strange and new. The sparrows were brighter than peacocks here, and their dogs outran our fallow deer, and honeybees had lost their stings, and horses were born with eagle's wings. And just as I became assured, my lame foot would be speedily cured. The music stopped, and I stood still. and found myself outside the hill. Left alone, against my will. To go now limping as before, and never hear of that country more. Alas, alas for Hamlet. <laughs> May I send east, west, north, and south to offer the piper by word of mouth wherever it was men's lot to find him silver and gold to his heart's content if only he'd return the way he went and bring the children behind him. When they saw it was a lost endeavor, the piper and dancers were gone forever They made a decree that lawyers never should think their records dated duly if, after the day and month and year, these words did not as well appear. And so long after what happened here, on the 22nd of July, 1376, the better in memory to fix the place of the children's last retreat, they call it the Pied Piper's Street. For anyone playing on pipe or tabor, was sure for the future to lose his labor. suffered they hostlery or tavern to shock with mirth a street so solemn. But opposite the place of the cavern, they wrote the story on a column. And on the great church window painted the same, to make the world acquainted how their children were stolen away. There it stands, to this very day. And I must not omit to say, in Transylvania, there's a tribe of alien people who ascribe the outlandish ways and dress on which their neighbors lay such stress to their fathers and mothers having arisen out of some subterraneous prison into which they were trepanned long ago in a mighty band out of Hamlin town in Brunswick land. But how or why they don't understand. So Willie, let me and you be wipers of scores out with all men, especially pipers. And whether they pipe us free from rats or from mice, if we promise them aught, let us keep our promise.